the William Optics Red Cat 51, a fantastic little telescope. I mean, camera lens? It's definitely a telescope, but it sure seems a lot like a camera lens. Welcome to Rob's observatory. Super creative. We view the cosmos on the grandest of scales. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome back to Rob's observatory. I'm Rob Lyons, and today I'm reviewing my William Optics Red Cat 51. I picked mine up in early 2020 for about 850 bucks. After using it for about three years, I've gained some experience with this optic. I did pay full retail. I have zero affiliation with the manufacturer or any retailers of this product. I think this is the perfect scope slash lens for anyone getting into astrophotography. Think of it as a bridge optic, if you will, something that helps you make the transition into shooting deep sky objects. It gives you enough reach to shoot that deep sky object, but it's also wide enough to not be too demanding on your tracking or guiding. It can be used with a DSLR or mirrorless camera, and it's still great once you transition to a dedicated astronomy camera. It's going to stick around and continue to deliver as your skills grow and develop. Let's take a closer look. We'll start with how it ships. You get this padded carry case with the Red Cat branding. Very nice, very cute. Okay, now that the cat's out of the bag, let's discuss the design and build. This is what is known as a Petsful design. It has four elements, so that means it's a quadruplet. It's made with synthetic fluorite glass, FPL 53, FPL 51, exactly what you want in a high quality optic. It's listed as being apochromatic, meaning it focuses red, green, and blue light equally. I haven't necessarily found this to be the case in practice, undoubtedly because I'm using filters and a monochrome camera, it might change things. If you were shooting full color terrestrial objects without filters, I'm sure it focuses those channels perfectly. It's close with what I do, but not perfect. Um, this Petzl design, it's very high contrast, extremely sharp. William Optics claims it's the sharpest 250mm lens in the world. It's also one of the only 250mm lenses in the world, so I do not doubt their claims. The Red Cat features a helical focuser, which is probably familiar to photographers, perhaps a little foreign to astronomers. The scope is all metal construction, very solid, also very red. I think you will agree that the Red Cat has a very bold design language. It really is quite stunning when you compare it to classic lenses or telescopes. So with the all metal design, high end glass, even with the dovetail and the tripod collar mounted, it is under four pounds. You can run this on any star tracker, any telescope mount you might have. If you wanna use this for terrestrial imaging, let's say uh, some bird photography, maybe some cinematography, you could run it on a tripod, a monopod, no problem. Uh, this is razor sharp corner to corner. It would make a great lens for that. But at f5, bear in mind, you'd probably be better served with a regular telephoto lens to get faster shutter speeds. So I wouldn't buy this specifically for terrestrial imaging of wildlife. I think it's better as a telescope, but it's there in a pinch if you wanted to use it on certain occasions, couple times a year, you go out and shoot some animals or whatnot. So something to keep in mind. The Red Cat has some very thoughtful features that distinguish itself from a typical camera lens. The dovetail plate can go between Vixen or Arca Swiss. You just take it off, flip it around, very handy. It does have a locking mechanism for your focus, so once you dial it in, you can set it and forget it as they say. The lens hood, or dew shield as astro nerds say, is lined with black velvety material and shields your lens nicely. It also stores well when it's reversed. Let's take a moment to appreciate this lens cap. Cute little kitty cat once again. And the piece de resistance? When you unscrew the end of the lens cap, you get the William Optics patented Batonoff mask to aid in focusing the red cat. It creates diffraction spikes on bright specular light sources like stars, making it much easier to dial in your focus. Since we're on the subject, if you want to add autofocus, you're going to need an adapter because of that helical focuser. There's several on the market, but it does add to the cost and complexity of your setup. But again, this plays into the versatile nature of the Red Cat, because with a mirrorless camera on a star tracker, you would just focus manually. And when you're on a bigger mount and using a dedicated astronomy camera, you can then upgrade and add that autofocus system. So it's nice to have those options. 
Here at the opposite end of the scope, we have a field rotator built in, making framing your subjects oh so much easier. I absolutely love this feature. We also have a tilt adjustment built in, making sure that your sensor is perfectly parallel with the projected image from the Red Cat. You just adjust these screws, dial in the tilt. Also at the back of the OTA, we have this M48 adapter. You can remove it and it allows you to thread in a two inch filter. You could add a dual narrow band, maybe a light pollution filter without using any additional accessories. This telescope does cover full frame. It's beautifully corrected corner to corner. No coma corrector, no field flattener is required. You're good to go right out of the bag. Lastly, we have this tripod collar, so you can change the orientation of your telescope rig, just like a telephoto camera lens. Cats love cradles, so I added this optional accessory to the top so I can mount my guide scope. It's actually called a saddle, it'll run you $50, you have to buy it separately. I do recommend picking up that accessory because uh, it's very helpful. It helps rig up all your extra attachments. Now let's take a look at what this looks like fully rigged with my Deep Sky Dad adapted ZWO electronic autofocuser attached. I will link to these accessories down in the description to help you find them if uh, you're interested in picking some of these up if you have a Red Cat. All right, so what are my thoughts about this? It's very affordable, extremely well corrected, high performance optic that will deliver incredible results whether you're using a DSLR, mirrorless, maybe a dedicated astronomy camera. It's compact, it's fairly light, just under four pounds, moderately fast aperture at 4.9. And I think it has this thoughtful, bold design that packs in a ton of useful features, the Batnoff mask, the field rotator and corrector, um, the two inch threaded filters into the back, uh, amazing. William Optics should be extremely proud of the engineering on this telescope. It is truly beautiful. Now, even after several years, there's a lot more competition in the space, but I still think this is the one, and I highly recommend it to anyone looking for a wide field scope slash lens, despite your experience level. This thing is exceptional. Um, I think images truly speak louder than words, so why don't we take a look at some of my favorite images that I've made with the Red Cat 51 to help you decide for yourself what you think of this telescope. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the Red Cat 51 by William Optics. This is going to be a wrap on this one. The stars belong to everyone, so get out there and see for yourself.